Hello, and welcome back to Youth Code Jam's online Bits and Bytes lessons. Today we're going to be using a new interface called Blockly. It's a program from Google, actually, and we're going to be looking at how to create a password and to um, do a little bit of beginner validation on that password. Um, so let's go ahead and pull up that menu tab. We're going to escape presentation mode. So in the new tab, I'm going to go to um, developers.google.com backslash Blockly. And this is going to look a little different than some of the other environments we have worked in. For one thing, when we type in this URL, it's going to take us to the um, right to the interface that we're going to use. So this is our coding space. It's very simple. It's very clean. Um, you can see that there's no picture over here. There's nothing to really see execute our code. Um, so this is kind of, especially for our students who've been coming for a while, this is to get them um, a little introduction to see what code will look like without blocks. So you can see on the side what we actually have. Um, you can see the sample code, what it looks like in Java, in, in JavaScript. And using the drop down, you can change it to Python or PHP or in Lua or Dart. So there's a couple, and you can see they're pretty similar actually. Um, the syntax, punctuation, formatting, that kind of stuff is a little different, but the actual logic is obviously the same. Um, so most of our students have only worked in blocks, so we wanted to give them this chance to see this is what your code, you would do the same project, but you could do it with um, typed out code instead. Um, so this is just to get them used to that and see kind of more traditional programs that they will do if they continue on with their computer science education in school. Um, the activities we'll do with Blockly are pretty similar to the introductory activities you'll do even in college classes, maybe not quite as extensive, but that idea. Um, so let's look at creating our first program. So the first thing we got to do here is get rid of this um, starter code. So let's click and drag it over to the trash can and just release it and it's gone. So we have a new empty space and the first thing we're gonna do is create a couple variables. So go to the variables drawer and click the create variable button. And we're gonna name this first one password and just press okay. And then create variable again. So you can see um, Unlike Scratch or Snap or any of those other interfaces that had a special kind of pop-up for that particular program, so it looked like it was a part of the program, um, Blockly just uses the browser pop-up option. So you, if you have this blocked for whatever reason, um, you may have to unblock pop-ups for a little bit and then just reblock them when you're done with the activity. This will not hurt anything. It's part of this program, so this is an okay pop-up. Um, but it is part of the browser, so if you have pop-ups blocked, you might not see this. All right, so the second one, we're going to name it confirm password. So what we're going to do, this is a very basic um, activity. We're going to type in a word as our password and then type it in again. And if they match, it will tell us, yeah, you matched. If it doesn't match, it will tell us it was wrong. So this is something that... Um, any kind of accounts do, any bank accounts you log in, any Roblox accounts you log into, they do this kind of validation to see if it, what password you gave them matches what's in file. Um, the big difference here is obviously you're giving the password twice. Um, so that's a little bit more closer to when you set up the account. Sometimes it asks you to type in your password again to make sure that you know what it is um, and you didn't make a typo somewhere. So that's what we're doing today. Um, so the next thing we're going to do, our first line of code is going to set our first variable. So we're going to go back to that variable store and get this set um, confirmed password block two and just drag it into our workspace. The first thing we're going to ask for is the actual the um, text or the word for the password. So use this drop down to change it from confirm password to password. And then go to the text drawer. And we're going to go all the way to the bottom of the text drawer and get this prompt for text with message ABC. And in the ABC part, you're going to type in, um, sorry, we're going to type in, please enter a password. Pretty simple, no special requirements, that's it. Um, if you want to see this, I recommend, especially if you're on a Mac, which can be a little sensitive, clicking the um, sideways scroll bar down here 
and moving and scrolling side to side like this instead of trying to use your mouse or keyboard. Sometimes it gets extra sensitive and what it will do is if you try to scroll, it might push you um, backwards if you're on a Mac using the trackpad. So it might push you to the page you were on before this and you'll lose your code. So I recommend if you need to see your whole block of code using this slider right here and just clicking on it to move from side to side. Okay, so this code, if we run it now, so if I click this green, this teal button here, it's going to give us this pop-up. It says, please enter a password. I'm just gonna type in something silly. That's a really bad password. Um, so th that's stored in the word password now. Um, so that's how that's gonna work. So now we're going to create a block almost like this, but for confirmed passwords. So go back to variables, get set confirmed password to, go to text, get the prompt for text block. And this time we're going to leave a message. We're gonna display a message to the user that says, um, please re-enter or please match your password. Um, please re-enter the password. Okay. All right. So now we have that. So after you run your code, you'll collect the password and hopefully the matching password. Um, but we're gonna validate that using an if condition. So go over to the logic drawer and we're gonna get this if blank do blank block. And after you attach it, click on that blue gear and we're going to get the else statement because we're gonna check for two conditions and connect it to the if in the little pop up here. All right, so once we have if do else, click on that blue gear again to make the pop-up go away. And we're gonna work on our if condition first. So go to the math drawer and get the, is it math? No, it's logic, sorry. Logic, and we're gonna get blank equals blank and attach it after the if. And then we're going to go to variables and get just the, um, get this password block here. Drop it on the left blank. Go back to variables and get confirmed password and drop it on the right blank. So it's going to see if these match. If they do, then we're going to display a text message that says that. And if they don't, we're gonna display an error message. So go to text. Um, and we're just going to get a print statement. So print ABC right here. And in where it says ABC, we're going to type whoops, password matches. And if it doesn't, we're gonna get a text block, another print text block and say, passwords don't match. All right, so that's it for our program, very simple. Um, so let's go ahead and click that play button. So again, I'm going to enter, I'm going to enter egg. This is a really bad password. Um, password matches, okay. So that's the end of the program if it matches. Um, if I enter two different words, passwords don't match. Um, so that's the end of the program. It's pretty simple. You guys should play around with it a little bit more. Maybe you can add, um, see if you can figure out how to validate if two numbers are the same. So I'll give you the hint right now. Our prompt is asking for text. If you can use the number drop down, that's how you validate numbers. Maybe you guys can do some math with that. Um, to make sure that it's actually a number. Um, we're going to look at the languages real quick. So if you're using JavaScript, the first thing we did was we created our passwords and then the um, browser asked us for our, our words, right? We got the original word and then we got the matching word and then it did the logic here. So this window alert that you guys are seeing in here in window prompt, it's telling the browser window to display a, a box that text box that we were entering in and working with um, for us to either enter stuff into or display content to us. So that's what the language would look like in JavaScript. We're just gonna look at Python real quick. It's very similar. Um, so what happened here was instead of just having a bunch of lines of code, it created a function. So this created a function to see if um, we actually entered a text message or not. So if we had entered a number or something else or 
um, misformatted something, you might have gotten an error. So that validated the input before we even validated if it matched. And you can see the program um, down in here. So yes, yeah, so there's your introduction to what um, text coding looks like with a very simple program. We'll have a few more of these. They'll get um, steadily more challenging as we go through. Um, real quick, before I let you guys go, we have a new sponsor for Bits and Bytes, and they are handling a lot of the registration for us now, which is awesome. The sponsor is Palo Alto. Um, so right now, instead of going to just a regular page for us, if you go to Jam at Home and click on Bits and Bytes, you're going to be directed to um, this special page. So like I said, Palo Alto is handling a lot of stuff for us right now. Um, as part of our partnership with them. So they're running registration through them. So you guys will actually register through them for the activities. Um, we'll still upload the activity sheet, sheets and videos to our website, um, but the actual registration will be through them. So if you click on this button, it will take you to their page. Um, so that link is just alamo.edu backslash PAC backslash after school programs. And you can see we have all of this here. Um, so we have upcoming, we're on digital literacy, but this is being worked on right now. So they'll have the activities listed as well as an overview. They'll have, um, so they'll have as many as available up. So that's our next coding unit, which is this video. After this, we have a puzzle club and then we'll have another um, code adventures. So yeah. Um, we're really excited about this partnership. It's going really well so far. We're getting lots of kids at our live lessons, which makes it fun. So we definitely encourage you all to join us there. They're still from 4.30 to 5.30 p uh, p.m. Central Time, Mondays and Wednesdays. So I hope to see you guys there.